hello welcome 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 this evening i promise not to keep you too long i'm really aiming so super hard for 30 minutes not because i don't love you and want to spend as much time as i possibly can educating you and demystifying myofunctional therapy but because it's late i don't know we all have other things we'd rather be doing like sleeping and so here on the East Coast, it's 8 p.m. Uh, wherever you are, I hope you are having a fantastic day. Let's dive right in so that I don't go over this time crunch that I promised you I would try to meet. And let's demystify Mayo because I know the very first thing that always seems to happen is somebody brings up OMT and everybody's eyes get all wide and bright and they're like, ooh, like what's that? And then the person who is telling them about OMT is telling them about all the life-changing things. Oh my goodness. It's so amazing. It's this, it's that. My career is great. I'm not in clinical or I am in clinical or I love my life and my job. And it just becomes very glitzy, very glamoury, glamorous, I should say. And it turns into this thing where it's like, come, 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 come here. I've got a secret to tell you because it seems like the best kept secret in dentistry to the point where people are like, I mean, how does this even work? Like people are struggling to figure that out. Like how do they navigate? this and make it practical for them and their life so that it applies, right? Well, tonight, we're going to break it all down and break it down into like various different types of careers, how you might practice this clinically, non-clinically, and what it really looks like, at least on a day-to-day -day basis, if you were doing this clinically, okay? So we all know that oral myofunctional therapy, or if you don't know, you're about to learn, <laughs> you learn today uh, that Myofunctional therapy is phenomenal. It is over a hundred years old. It at this point has a very strong foundational roots from dentistry that are now really reviving and picking back up in dentistry. So I like to call it innovative in this day and time because less than 1% of dentistry is actually implementing this. It's really something that we need so much more of to really own and to hone in on the space because a lot of these little boxes here are actually within our wheelhouse. Periodontal disease, TMD, parafunctional habits, mouth breathing, sleep disordered breathing, all of this stuff all relates to dentistry. So I'm not talking about how OMT can help you with your class fives, although it probably can help you a little bit with that, with some of the retention on those uh, at fractions and such. It actually is something that's very useful for your patients, right? But a lot of times just knowing that isn't enough. And because really what draws us into myofunctional therapy or what draws most of us into myofunctional therapy is one of these three things. So these are the top three things that draw people in. So either they have a personal connection and I'll tell you my story. If you haven't heard my story already, I'll actually give you a little bit more depth to my story. So as a registered dental hygienist, I was working with a phenomenal pediatric dentist um, who I still admire and respect today and send people to and highly recommend. This dentist was very much invested in airway, doing ALF, already doing, you know, tongue ties before it was cool, like was into all the things. And that's back in 2014 when we first encountered each other and I'm starting to get a glimpse of what all this stuff looks like. I had a baby at the end of of 2014. 2016, we wind up leaving. Um, we wind up leaving the practice that we were in a group practice together. We wind up both leaving the practice. She opens up her own practice, invites me in one day a week that rapidly turned into working full time. And it really became a conversation where it's like, I really need you to get to this airway stuff. Now from 2014 to 2017, I had three years of learning all this stuff off and on. I saw all the things that it can do. I heard Scott Siegel speak like three times before I ever took a myofunctional therapy course. But what really like made it light shine over my head, that nice little light bulb that's like, oh, this is a good idea. This is something I should do is when I finally realized that it was something that was happening in my home. Like it took amazing myofunctional therapist, Paula Fabi, to look at my daughter. She literally spent seconds with my child and said, this child can't breathe. She needed to see an ENT yesterday. Then we go to the infamous Stephen Park and Stephen Park is like, 
what do you need me for? Paula Fabi told you that. So I'm like, one, I want to know how to do her magic. Two, I have to help my child. I really, really deeply and truly have to help my child because she was one of four and all four had issues. And so it's that personal connection that really drives you in and really makes you go hard and full force. It's not always the education, right? Then there's personal unprofessional, I should say, unfulfillment, which may go along with personal unfulfillment. Sometimes the monotony of every single day is the same thing. And at some point for me, I loved pediatric dentistry. I was doing it for several years. And then at some point I was like, "Uh, uh-uh, I got to go to a general practice or something. Like I can't keep doing this every day is a profi. Like I need to scale someone like, let me get an SRP. I need to do injections. Like why do I have all these skills that I can't utilize? So sometimes the monotony of what it is that we do clinically in dentistry can be what's like, okay, I need to do something different. How can I save my wrist, my neck, my back? How can I save myself from this and save my brain from the chronic monotony of all these tedious things we do again and again and again with every single patient? Myofunctional therapy will whip that brain right into shape because there is no two cases that look exactly alike and you will always be on your toes. So sometimes it's that professional unfulfillment that's going to bring you in and round you out to like, ooh, here's something I can do that can utilize that clinical knowledge and bring it into, you know, something new and different. And then there's just a desire for more income. Sometimes Mayo just looks appealing because you're like, they charged what? Mm -hmm. So there's a myofunctional therapist that's charging $6,600 to work with people. I can charge that. Oh, cool. Uh, I'm where do I drop my scalers off? Because I, I don't need this. <laughs> I don't need these scalers anymore. So that desire for more income might bring you in. But it's always one of those three. Very rarely is it I've learned and I understand what the myofunctional therapy does. And therefore, I, that's why I'm going to get into it. And that's okay. That's absolutely okay. No matter what brought you in or brought you here to this lecture today, I'm going to help you kind of realize what it is that myofunctional therapy kind of looks like and how you can get it to really work for you. Because this is the face I typically get when I end mini lectures and I'm like, all right. And if you're looking for a myofunctional therapist, I have this really cool slide and don't steal my idea anybody. <laughs> this really cool slide where it's like, if you're looking for a myofunctional therapist, here's how to find one. You can use this directory. You can use that, or you can look at a mirror. And if you look in a mirror, it's you, you could be a myofunctional therapist. And then that's the immediate face. So it's like, mm, no, I don't think so. I don't I don't think I can be that because it's hard to envision it when there's no talk about the practicality of what that actually looks like day to day. So Let's dive in. Uh, there are no right and no wrong ways. Mayo looks like a lot of different things. I've done it many different ways. I'm going to tell you about all the ways that I've done myofunctional therapy. Um, and I will say that I don't even think I've done it all the ways that it can be done, but you can utilize myofunctional therapy education and really implement in a variety of ways that can be fulfilling both personally, professionally, and then an additional financially. Okay. So here are the two little buckets we're going to put our career options in. One is clinical and the other bucket is non-clinical. And we'll talk about each of them when we'll break them all up, but just to kind of overview, you're going to have the clinical aspect, which is really going to be what you can do while you are still in your clinical role. When I first started my functional therapy, because of my professional, um, sorry, because my personal connection with it and wanting to help my children, I had no desire to stop doing hygiene. I wanted to do hygiene for as long as I possibly could. And then as I became more and more and more involved and I wanted to do more and more and more of that, that's when it kind of wound down to me, you know, turning into a, a separate independent hygienist. But I did work clinically in myofunctional therapy, which you can absolutely do within a dental office. There's just some separation that needs to be done while you're doing so. Non-clinically is going to involve you not actually utilizing your myofunctional therapy information in here to actually produce your income or as your job role. You will be using it to 
you know, help others in a different kind of way. So whether you're helping others professionally get involved or you're helping others to be able to uh, navigate the field. Okay. So the clinical roles, oh, I hate StreamYard. They always mess up my slides, but the clinical roles. So there's the intermediary. As an intermediary, I like to call this, you're kind of managing the myo middle. If you didn't see last week's lecture, you need to go back and watch last week's lecture. It fully dives into how you can navigate the myo middle. Um, that is going to be part of the ways. So it's not being a full myofunctional therapist, and it's also not being a full clinical hygienist. You have all the information, you have all the answers, and you're going to remotely manage oral myofunctional disorders in a... Uh, a distance capacity. It's really going to be more of a hands-off approach. So you're really putting in your time and your effort while they're still in the chair for a recall or recare visit or whatever you're calling your hygiene visits, okay? This is a really great way for you to manage your myofunctional therapy where it's not something where you're heavily personally invested into every case and all of the outcomes over the span of a year, 18 months, two years, however long it might take you to finish some of your cases. It's a really great way to, as you're having different touch points with each of your patients, you're kind of handing off your information and educating them along the way and helping them to get better on a longer time frame. okay? Referral is another great way. We need all the referring specialists that we can get. And that's not just me saying that as a outside of clinical hygienist, um, myofunctional therapist. It's me saying that as somebody who acknowledges that there's so much that we can help our patients with for airway, for sleep, for breathing, for perio, for TMD, for ortho, all these things. And so if we're referring, we are all actually in the clinical role doing something as a myofunctional therapist, if you're referring, if you just are looking, you're assessing, you're screening, you're knowing what to look for, you're seeing dysfunction, and you're giving really thorough referrals, education, and recommendation. You could work independently. You could be a contractor or a renter. Now, there are a lot of people who sometimes rent out a space, an office space within a dental practice. But you could also, alternatively, you could come in as an employee or an independent contractor and work within a dental office. I'll tell you about this one office that I worked in in such a capacity. In this capacity, essentially what I was doing is I would go in on Tuesday mornings, it was always Tuesday mornings, and I'd be there for a couple of hours every Tuesday mornings, and all I would do is post-operative wound management. That is all. So they would have the schedule all filled up. I would come in, independent contractor, I get paid, and I go in, and I just see however many people they were able to put into the schedule. Somebody comes, doesn't come, whatever, it doesn't affect my income. I'm there for that daily rate, and I'm seeing as many people as possible. Very, very hectic, super duper crazy. Um, but I did love it because it made my life super simple. I never had to clean a room. I just had to really just go and be where I was told to be, go see such and such an op one, go see such and such an op two, such and such an op three. And it was very consistent. And so I think that's a really great way for you to work independently within a practice. You can be an employee. You don't have to have yourself as a separate entity that they're referring out to. You don't have to go get your own shingle or have your own practice. You can work within one. Here's the thing, though. Those don't come easy. Those are not roles that just get handed down to you. You don't get that as just, oh, I'm going to go on Indeed and look for who's looking for a myofunctional therapist. No one. No one, boo. No one is looking for you, okay? You have to make these opportunities yourself. You have to approach different practitioners who might be in your area who are already focused on airway, sleep, and so forth, and see how you can collaborate and if that is a position that you can acquire or take on. So clinical roles definitely come with a bit more of work, okay? It's a little bit complicated to kind of navigate that. But what does that look like for your day to day when you're in this role, particularly in hygiene? Okay. So you're going to do all your typical stuff. You're really going to only change it up at the very, very end. Instead of just OHI, so oral hygiene instructions, you would do OFI, oral 
functional instructions. I love OFI. OFI is really uh, the key here. Now, a lot of what I used to do when I was in that pediatric practice, I came into the pediatric practice back from my hygiene course, and it was like, implement right now, right away. <laughs> And so we did, we implemented and we figured it out and we figured out a system that worked for us. But a lot of what I did in my regular pediatric hygiene role was I was bringing in people, I'm doing x-rays, medical history, I'm doing the assessment, I'm looking around, I'm doing my profi, I'm talking to the patient, I'm talk talking to the parent, we're doing education, I am demonstrating for them, I'm showing them, look at the lack of spacing, look at the tongue here, look at the open bite, look at this, look at that, look at these cute little cheeks that we don't want to be so cute and chubby we really would like to get those cheeks strengthened and get the awareness. And we're talking about all the things. So I was educating them and documenting a lot of what I was educating them on. And then from there, we're talking with a lot of recommendations. One of those recommendations is absolutely you need to get an evaluation for myofunctional therapy. Here's what that looks like. Here's what that is. But then some of it was also too, it was really just saying, okay, you got to get this one off the sippy cup. He's five years old. He shouldn't have a sippy cup. Like he shouldn't have had it when he was one. He definitely doesn't need it now. Get rid of the sippy cup. Okay. <laughs> get it rid of it. He could use a regular cup. I'm sure all of his other friends in kindergarten are using regular cups. Hopefully you never know. Or the pouches when they would come in with the pouches. And so you're giving them oral functional instructions with some of your recommendations. And that's how you're going to be able to help them too in that kind of clinical role. So does it add time to your schedule? Absolutely. It can't do anything but add time to your schedule. But what I used to like to do was I talk while I work. And so I'm educating while I am working. That way we can kind of merge and kill two birds with one stone and do as much oral functional instructions as we can while we're waiting. Um, and then a lot of times you have downtime when you're waiting for exams. And so instead of chatting about where your next vacation is going to be, throw in some OFI, okay? But what does that look like as a myofunctional therapist? So if you are renting a space, if you are coming in and you're working clinically in an office, well, a lot of times it has to look like a consultation first. You need to do the consultation first. You can charge for that. You don't have to charge for that. That's a very complex thing that you know we can get into another day, another time. But the consultation is for triage. Triage is the word I was looking for. You want to triage your patients because not everybody needs Maya right away. You could look at somebody, you could be like, oh, they're tongue-tied, Maya, Maya's the first thing. Sometimes it's not. Sometimes expansion's the first thing. Sometimes we have to deal with something else as the first thing. It might need manual therapy as the first thing. There are so many different ways that you can take that. It doesn't have to be right away jumping into myofunctional therapy. If the next step is myofunctional therapy, though, it's usually a comprehensive evaluation and intake. So you're doing a full workup. This can be an hour to two hours. Some people take even more than two hours, but we're looking at all of the muscles and all of the function of those muscles for all their, the space below the eyes and above the shoulders. So we're working all here. And in that area, we're going to find where there's any um, asymmetries, overdeveloped muscles, underdeveloped muscles, compensatory patterns, and we can get a pinpoint where it is that we have to work in order to get them to proper oral function and to habituate such, okay? So there's a whole spectrum and schema of things there. And then regular sessions. And the regular sessions are leading to a goal of habituation. So everybody does it a little differently, but myofunctional therapy programs most commonly have three different levels to them. So one, you're going to kind of isolate and strengthen different muscle groups. So where there's that asymmetry, where there's their underdevelopment or overdevelopment, you're going to work on those individual muscles to help them get to where they need to be. Establish a solid foundation and baseline so that you can do the next step, which is coordination. So you're going to coordinate all those muscles. This is where we eliminate compensatory patterns. The last step is habituation. So habituation is where you're going to really get a lot of your really good growth and progress because at that point you have established new neuromuscular patterns and habits. Okay. So myofunctional therapy program can take commonly anywhere from six to 12 
months on average. It depends on who you're speaking to. My case is me personally, the best case I ever finished super duper fast, very few cranial nerve dysfunctions and cranial nerves are like a whole thing I can geek out with you at a whole nother time. But uh, two months, two months in and out, fully habituated. We are years later, we checked in and four years later, still fully habituated. So I don't want to hear any nonsense about my, my two month case. Then the longest I have ever worked with somebody was just over two years. So it could be any sort of range. And when you're working with these people for these lengthy periods of time on these things that are really detrimental to their everyday quality of life, it becomes very draining to become very attached to you. And so when you're working with them, you're working in these interims where you're seeing them once a week or once every other week or once every three or four weeks, you're seeing them at different intervals. In between time, they're doing exercises. So I like to compare myopunctional therapy to personal training. Okay. It just makes sense as a visual. Now, I hope you've imagined some buff personal trainer, like looking at you mm, and you're like, Ooh, wow, he's going to get me in shape. That's what I think people see when I come into a room. They're like, Ooh, she's going to get my tongue in shape. Something like that. Right. Here's the comparison. So personal trainer, you go into the gym, you want to work out with a personal trainer, you work out with them one day a week, you go home, you sit on your couch the rest of the week. Will you ever get six pack abs? I'll wait. No. <laughs> and you know why, right? It's not the personal trainer's fault. You completely understand what happened because you know that the muscles don't work like that. Well, great. Myofunctional therapy is just working with muscles further up in the body. All muscles, regardless of where they are located, can only do one thing. They can relax and they can retract. That is it. Rela contract and relax. There you go. They can contract and they can relax. So if I'm going to get neuromuscular repatterning and I'm going to get improved strength and awareness of these muscles, you're going to have to put in that same dedication that you would for six pack abs. And yes, that includes a diet change. Yes, that includes some lifestyle changes. Yes, it includes everything that you would need. If you were going to get six pack abs, you're going to have to do that up here for your six pack mouth. OK, so it's dedication. So you're working with these people for these lengthy periods of time, anywhere from six to nine months, 12 months or two months to two years. It doesn't matter. But in between time, they're committing for the long run to continue to work on their musculature, their strength, their awareness and habituating all of that to be proper oral function. OK, so that's the common uh chain of events for your myofunctional therapist. Okay, clinical roles aside and the clinical bucket aside, non-clinical roles. When we're thinking of those non-clinical roles, we're thinking of people who are not exactly using the myofunctional therapy information in the traditional way. Not everybody who becomes a therapist, oh, not everybody who takes a course is going to become a myofunctional therapist. In fact, most people fail. Not like you fail out of the course, but you fail to make your investment back. You fail to get started. And so it's okay. There are other roles for you. If you've already invested in a course and you're like, I don't know what to do with this information now. It feels useless. Guess what? There's a lot of different roles you can do. A whole lot of different roles. There is increased awareness, so much increased demand for myofunctional therapy. And a lot of therapists who are looking for each other that is an open opportunity for a consultant or a coach, somebody who can help others navigate the system. Do you understand if myofunctional therapy is their very first step or if it's not? If you understand that basic thing, having conversations with families and people who have to budget, who have to say, look, I don't have all this disposable income to invest in myofunctional therapy and appliance, a phrenectomy, and have body work done. I can't do all those things. So what's most important? Awesome. We need somebody to talk to who's completely unbiased, who has no vested interest in the outcome, right? So if you talk to a provider about an appliance, you, you feel like you never know if you can really trust what they're saying because they have a vested interest in the outcome. You wind up paying the money, like they benefit off of you paying the money. So you're like, I don't know if that's really the right first way to go. 
having somebody to triage that, a coach or a consultant, you can absolutely dominate the market with something like that. That's a fantastic non-clinical route to go that not enough people are doing. There are a couple out there um, and I I really do applaud them. It, it was so hard for me to talk to some of these families and then you know direct them to someone else and then never follow up and not know like how, how everything is going because they typically stop responding. They're working with such and such now. But I think it's a really, really wonderful role. You could also be a sales rep. Now, being a sales rep, I hate sales. And I've learned that the hard way. Like sales is not my jam. It's not my thing at all. However, once I stopped thinking about sales in the traditional sense, and I started thinking about making connections with people that are deep connections, deep rooted connections. Oh my gosh, it's become so much easier for me to really work with people. And there's also a lecture about that. Uh, but that's neither here nor there. Sales rep, sales rep for a lot of different companies. So whether it is Myo Brace, Myo Aligner, um, it could be Myo. Myo braces has Myo Chew. I was about to say Myo Chew, but not Myo Chew. It could be the laser companies. It could be courses. Those course providers, they need sales reps because trust me, the sales, they're not doing as well as they think that they're doing. And I think everybody thinks everybody's doing really great. And that's not the case at all. So full transparency, you're needed in sales. Okay. Any sort of sales roles that you see in an airway focused, um, Discipline is going to be something that is a fantastic choice for you as a person who has education in myofunctional therapy. And then you can work in offices. There are a lot of these great tongue tie centers that are popping up everywhere. So since Alabama tongue tie center popped up, a lot of different ones have sort of come to life and a lot of different people are specializing in this. So there are airway centers, there are sleep centers, there are tongue tie centers, and you can be a treatment coordinator at one of those centers. Again, just like how you would do so independently as a contractor or a consultant, what you would do as a treatment coordinator is you would help these people in the office understand what the treatment is, what the sequence is, why they need this treatment, and really sell the cases for the office and really get that turnover. That way everybody wins, right? People get the care and the help that they need. You have a job and a role that fulfills you. And, you know, the office is able to produce and help more people. Outside of these clinical and non-clinical roles, I'm telling you, this is not an all-encompassing, like, oh my gosh, this is only things that you can be. There's a lot of different things that you can do with the myofunctional therapy education, but these are just like some of the top things that come to mind for me and where I have seen other people succeed and where I know I've succeeded independently as well. So the possibilities are literally endless. There's so much you can do with this information, even if you just break it down into something that you offer separately for people as an independent therapist. It is is just absolutely phenomenal, the different ways that you can take myofunctional therapy when you go that route. So I have to leave you, and I really, I'm, I'm going for this 30, 30 minute thing. I have to leave you with this quote, because I think it's incredibly important that you have this. Someone else's broken system does not have to write your story. There is a lot that's broken in the system right now, especially within dentistry, trying to get into myofunctional therapy. So much is broken in that three times more, a greater loss for dental professionals than any other professional that's trying to get into myofunctional therapy. Three times more, we lose our investment over other professionals. So here's what I have to say to you to that. The system is broken. You don't need your story to be broken. If you are looking to get into myofunctional therapy and you're confused about anything, drop it in the chat. I will happily do a lecture and I will go live and I will help you understand what it is that you need to get over so that you can get to the next side, the next level, okay? We don't need people failing in myofunctional therapy. We need more success stories. And trust me, there are not nearly as many as you would expect for the number of courses that there are. So let's start 
revitalizing the system and changing the way the system occurs and what happens in the system. If you are interested and you have more questions or you want to talk to me about something that is like absolutely, you know, very personal, you have something going on with your child and you need to know what the first step for you is, feel free to connect with me in the chat. And I don't know if it just went on YouTube or LinkedIn or if it went nowhere, who knows, but in the chat, I dropped my link for my calendar feel free to schedule something with me. I am more than happy to chat with you. Um, and I am looking forward to being with you guys again next week when we'll talk about another interesting topic that was actually brought up to me by somebody who attended last week's lecture. So please, your comments matter. Drop it in the chat what it is that you are feeling. Oh, hopefully, oh, there we go. I think we're back. <laughs> okay, drop it in the chat. Uh, whatever your comments are, trust me, they matter. And I will lecture and teach to them. I'm hoping you have a fantastic evening. Thanks so much for joining me. Bye guys.